dropping gems from Keisha Christian. She's on a mission, sharing information, knowledge for soul, body and mind. Dropping gems, KeishaGems.com. KeishaGems.com. Welcome to episode two of Dropping Gems Podcast. My name is Keisha Christian, holistic lifestyle coach, author, and owner of Keisha's Gems LLC. My co-host on this episode entitled, Baby, Let's Talk About Sex, is Professor Venice Richards. She is an award-winning educator, executive producer, and founder of Hashtag Pink and Sexy. Welcome to the show. So excited to continue this conversation with you. Yes, I'm excited about being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, Venice. Well, today, um, I just want to continue the conversation we had about um, our sexual health, um, especially in our community. And um, one of the things that um, I came across or that was um, sent to me by one of my followers was actually um, something that happened at um, New Jersey um, Surgery Center. Um, it has come to my attention that at New Jersey Surgery Center, close to 4,000 people were exposed or are possib have possibly been exposed to HIV and um, hepatitis C. Oh my goodness. So it makes me wonder, could one of the reasons why people in our community have such a high rate of HIV or STDs, could it be that they're unknowingly exposed to these diseases or viruses? It's just food for thought. I'm not sure what neighborhood the surgery center is in, but it kind of gives me, um, it kind of makes me think, could that be the reason why or one of the reasons why? What's your take? It, it, it definitely puts a question mark on, um in your head, um, when, when I hear something like that, uh, it, it also explains the reason why people are reluctant to seek out the help that they need from the medical community. Because when you hear about things like these um, that, that could be possibly happening, it, it makes you question, well, I mean, uh, are you here to heal me or, or, or cure me or protect me? Or are you here to experiment on me? Exactly. I mean, that's just the question that pops into my head. Um, same question that pops into my head every time there's some type of a, a food recall. Like, what, what are we doing here? Are, are you trying to poison me on purpose? Like, I just see automatically, you know, and it's not a conspiracy theory thing. It's what you're showing me. You know, you're showing me that you can't keep my food supply healthy. You're showing me that if I come here for medical treatment, that I may walk away with something more than what I came with. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Like it's just, it definitely does leave a question mark in my head, you know? Yeah. So that's something that I just wanted to touch on. Well, in today's episode, what we're going to be talking about um, is about protecting yourself and not just with the use of condoms, but various ways that you could protect yourself and protect your, I would like to say, your, your spiritual being, you know, your, your sacred space. What are ways that we could actually protect ourselves, men and women in um, African-American community? Now, one of the right. ways, as you, you already know, and most people should know, is the um, use of condoms. Not just um, male condoms, but they also have female condoms as well. So that's something that should be used as a way of protecting yourself. It mm -hmm. will not protect you from all STDs, but um, you're at a higher um, advantage point by using a condom every single time correctly when you are, want to engage in a um, sexual act. Even oral. Yes, exactly. So as well as, be, yeah, just besides um, vaginal, vaginal sex for, well, for women, but also oral. If you're engaging in oral sex, you should use some form of protection. And I know that it's easier said than done. Um, yeah. You know, 
in, 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 on, you know, certain occasions, especially when, um, you know, uh, uh, emotions are high, Mm -hmm. um, you know, but at the same time, uh, you know, um, my, what did my mother used to say? Something about a, uh, 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 ounce of cure beats a pound. Uh, uh, what an ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure, or something yes. like that. Yes, an yeah. ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we don't always practice it. This is um a given, but we do need to take our um sexual health definitely more serious than we do, especially when the data is out there showing that we're being infected at alarming rates. Yeah. Um. You know, and as a um, as a pure romance um, consultant, this is one of the things that I talk about with my ladies at the parties. You know, in terms of empowering oneself, not just um, financially um, by by owning a business and things like that, but definitely sexually empowering yourself sexually. You want to know what feels good. You want to um, engage in, in certain activities, but you want to be safe with whatever it is that you do because you really don't want to, um, you know, essentially uh, end your life early or mess up your life by making choices that don't benefit you in the end. Exactly. So we have to be smart and definitely, definitely ladies, ladies, if you're dating, you know, some of us might not want to bring a condom with us, but I think that's um, important that you also bring protection with you and don't just depend on the man to um, provide that. Right. And men should not pretend, uh, should not, um, you know, uh, uh, expect for the woman to provide that either. Exactly. It goes both ways. Manage your expectations. Like, don't just assume she's on the pill or she told you that she's on the pill. You're just going to go ahead and automatically believe that. Always still wrap it up. You know, it's, it's important. So you should have protection. She should have protection. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, right up there with your lube and, 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 you know, spermicide, you should have your condoms and, you know, be safe. The name of the game is being safe. It is being safe. Well, I have an embarrassing story I have to tell. I remember the first time I learned about um, condoms. It's so funny. My, I, I think it was about 13 or 14. There was some program on television. And my mom made me sit down and watch this program. And they were actually showing you how to put a condom on a banana. <laughs> and it was so embarrassing because I was still a virgin at the time. I didn't even have a boyfriend, right? And um, she was like, no, you need to come and watch this. And to tell you the truth, I didn't start having sex until I was in my 20s. So that's when I lost my virginity. I was in my 20s. Yeah, I'm putting my business out there. So um, <laughs> I, I, went, I just sat there and watched this. But I mean, like, in hindsight, when I look at it now, you know, she really was um, preparing me in case it was to happen. I would know exactly what to do. And it wouldn't be like up to the male or whomever I'm with. You know, thankfully, I was I was grown by the time I started having sex. But at that time, it was embarrassing. But I, I say this to say this is something that um, as parents, you know, possibly show your child how to use a condom. You might not want them to be having sex because I'm pretty sure she did not want me having sex at 14. But she wanted me to know, you know, how to use a condom, what a condom was, you know. So I think it's so important. There is this um, there is this huge misconception that adults tend to have. It's it's this thing of oh well you know if I talk to my child about this or if I show my child this then that means that I'm giving them permission to uh, uh, to to engage in risky behavior and 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 I'm I'm saying it's okay to be having sex at this young age and that's so far from the truth because your children what they do is they listen very carefully to what it is that you tell them especially when you say it early Mm -hmm. early it rings in their ears trust me I know my mother started having conversations with me about my body and what it all means she put that all together with the good touch bad touch Mm -hmm. at at seven so at seven years old I knew what a period was. I knew what a pad was. I knew what good and bad touch was. And I knew that someday I would, once my period started, I was going to be able to have babies, which meant 
that I had to protect myself so that I would not be a young mother. That mm-hmm. was my mother's talk at seven. Mm-hmm. And she reinforced it year after year after year, right up until when I was around 14, when I actually got my period. And at that point, she was like, you could tell me anything, anything, anything about anything. I want to know it all. And even then, you know, I still was reluctant to go to her. But, you know, at 18, 19, when I actually started having sex, it, it was funny because I did actually go to her. And mm-hmm. she was so cool about everything and really was my best friend trying to get me through the ups and downs of relationships and men and, 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 and situations. You know what I mean? But exactly. she started at seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mom started young too. My mom started young with me as well. So yeah, you were having. That's probably why I, I probably I waited twenties until like right. because I knew I knew we to, we had these talks. She would talk to me yep. all the time about periods, yep. all of that. So I was very well informed. Yeah, very young. That, and that's what we have to do with our kids. Like parents that are running around. If you are like in your forties or in your late thirties, and you have middle school kids, and you're not talking to them about sex, that is disturbing. Mm-hmm. Because you have no idea what your children are being exposed to when you're not around. Because the things I remember hearing my friends say and um, when I was in middle school and how a girl could get pregnant, I used to tell them, no, that's not true. And I used to tell them, I say, um, explain to them exactly how you could get pregnant. What will happen if, you know, about the penis entering the vagina. I was very, um, I was very descriptive because that's how my mom taught me. So you like, you couldn't, no one could tell me anything. So. You know, as right. far as like my peers, you couldn't tell me because my mom taught me that already. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a way of protecting what we're protecting our children, the next generation. You know, we right. don't continue with this, um, this epidemic. So we really need to talk to our, our children. And it should right. start at a young age. We shouldn't yep. think, oh, they're too young because my parents started with me. Well, my mom, I should say. My mom started with me at a young age talking about sex and that's 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 how i feel and i'm glad keisha that you feel the same way Mm -hmm. um it really does kind of alarm me when i hear um you know my peers um express disinterest in talking to their child about these issues and i'm like a middle school high school teacher and i'm looking like are you seriously ain't gonna talk to your child about this like for real like this how we doing it right now Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And for me to have to like walk around and see ninth graders pregnant, like, you know what I mean? And, 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 um, what, there was a scare one time, an outbreak, a scare. And I was like, are you kidding me? And they, you know, we, you know, I have, you know, teachers or whatever saying to me, okay, well, you know, there's like an outbreak. There's like 20 students affected. Da, 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 da. What? Like, who's not, why, why, why are we not having, and then the, you know, the, the school ended up having to, buckle down and start in health classes all the health teachers all having this conversation now with the students and having paperwork signed as to whether or not it's you know permission slips as to whether or not it was okay to have this conversation but they had to do it the school had to do it because the outbreak was happening and you know what i mean and luckily it wasn't anything that they couldn't get rid of but 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 it was happening yeah <laughs> I I can't even imagine when I was in school. I don't remember anything like that. You know, I don't ever remember anything like that happening when I was in school. But it's happening now. Yeah, it's happening, and it's it's scary. It's and it's quite alarming. It's scary. <laughs> yes. Well, um, I also wanted to talk about abstinence versus celibacy because that is another way of protecting yourself. Now, we right. tend to use these words interchangeably, but abstinence and celibacy are quite, they're not the same. Right. And when we speak of celibacy, we're talking about um, someone who um, voluntarily choose to remain unmarried or engage in any sexual form of activity. So that would be, for example, if you are a nun or a monk or a priest. Mm-hmm. Um, those the people who um, choose to go into that sort of lifestyle would be considered celibate. So, okay. But um, 
as for me, what I practice is abstinence. So if I'm not in a serious relationship with someone, I abstain from having sex. That's a way of me protecting myself. So I just wanted to um, put that out there. So let me ask you a question. Yes. When it comes to abstaining from sex, mm -hmm. are, we, uh, are we abstaining from all sex? Is masturbation on the table? Well, when I talk about abstaining, I'm talking about um, having sex with someone else, not masturbation. Got it. Okay. Yes. So celibacy is not having sex with anyone or anything, period. No yes. so masturbation. You, told, you choose to remain unmarried and you don't engage in any sexual form of activity. So you don't masturbate or anything. That's celibacy. Abstinence. Okay, great. Yes. So it. abstinence is when you... Um, you don't engage in, um, well, I, when I say abstinent, I don't engage in sex with someone else if I'm not in a serious relationship. Got it. Yeah. That's important to, um, uh, to, to definitely distinguish between the two. Mm -hmm. um, I find that um, the practice of not having sex um, elevates creativity yes. and I think that that is an amazing amazing journey because it allows you to really be able to use your energy because we know that energy energy never never energy dies energy doesn't. is transformed you know or energy is transferred but it, it never dies that's physics right yeah um, yes. so when you take that sexual energy and it becomes creative energy. Well, actually, it's that's what sexual energy is. It is creative, creative energy. Yep. Yep. So now you can take that and you can use that in other areas of your life in order to promote a sense of wellness and a sense of um, peace and also a sense of, uh, there's a word, um, 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 self-actualization. Yes. Because at the end of the day, we're all about self-actualization. So mm -hmm. that's how our goal is to get to that. So, And when you say self-actualization, what exactly do you mean? It's knowing exactly who you are, what your needs are, and who fits into that picture um, in terms of in terms of serving. They, they, they need to serve your higher self. Like whoever you are as a higher being they need to whoever you have around you they all need to fit within that puzzle that 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 elevates you that that keeps you on you know that higher level um self-actualization just means that you're the closest to god that you can be mm -hmm. you know you're the closest to yourself that you can be um your higher when self. you have a so you're right when you have a higher self mm-hmm Right. When you have achieved self-actualization, you definitely have become your higher self. Exactly. You know, and, and it, 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 when, you know, it's, it's a beautiful place to be. It's a place where we all should be striving to be, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe it's about perfection as it is about um, just, just having peace of mind and, 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 and really having things figured out on a certain level. Um, and you, you need that. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're engaging in sexual activity and you're not protecting yourself, you're leaving yourself wide open to um, depleting that creative energy that you could have that could literally build the life around you that you really want. Like, it's hard to focus on being who you are supposed to be when you're not protecting yourself. Exactly. So it's, just, it's more than using a condom. It's like protecting your spirit. So, yes, exactly. I see what you mean. You're protecting that, that your temple. So right. It's more than a condom. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, um, and it's also about putting things in its proper place. Okay. Um, we mentioned like pregnancy before. Um, mm -hmm. We're definitely talking about HIV and, um, you know, hepatitis C that came up. You know, we're talking about these rates and how high they are. Like when you, when you are not putting things in its proper place, in its proper order, what it does is it adds chaos to your life. 
So now instead of you focusing on, you know, um, building uh, up yourself in a certain area of your life, now you have to focus on backtracking to make sure that you didn't get pregnant, to make sure that um, you don't have any um, STDs or anything that could potentially end your life early. Um, you have to focus on, um, is this person that I'm having sex with and sharing myself with, are they really for me? Are they really with me? Um, it just leads to almost like a hemorrhaging mm -hmm. of your creativity and, and your mindset and your spirit. And it just, it really depletes you and keeps you stuck. Yes. Yes, it does. You know? So we have to just definitely, you know, be more mindful of that and, and, and really spend less time, you know, trying to see how much sex we can have or, see how risky we can make you know like stop looking for a thrill let the thrill be oh i just made my first million or let the thrill be you know my my mom is good like my family is good um you know let the thrill be oh like i actually did get married and then have children like mm -hmm. like put things in this proper context you yeah. know yeah and you know with that being said like you know in terms of talking about you know, our temple and, 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 um, and self-actualization. Wait, Venice, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about that in the next episode, recognizing your sacred temple. So I think we need to, um, to save that for the next show. Okay. Yes, we definitely do. So I thank you so much, everyone, for listening to today's podcast. And, um, Venice, I thank you so much for being my lovely co-host. And thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Blessings to you. Yes. Enjoy. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to Just Dropping Gems podcast. This episode has been sponsored by Keisha's Gems and Dropping Gems Books. Be sure to visit our website where we offer holistic solutions with the soul in mind. And check out my new book, Healthy Gems, Nourishing Practices and Self-Care Tips for Busy Individuals, available on Amazon or purchase an autographed copy on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.droppinggems.com. That's D-R-O-P-P-I-N-G-G-E-M-Z.com. If you are interested in being a sponsor or advertising on this podcast, you can contact us at www.keishagems.com. That's www.k-e-i-s-h-a-g-e-m-z.com. Or email us at keishagems at gmail.com. Much abundance to you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.